We're back. Welcome back, Valverde. Remember us? No, you don't, because you probably got kids older than the <laughs> gap in the last between the last two years of content that we've been doing. But uh, but we are back. We are we are back. back. And um, back. And uh, I'm here with well, I'm Duncan Casey. Sorry, the, um, octogenarian See? now. Duncan we are Casey. we are out of practice, aren't we? <laughs> Very out of practice. Um, and I, I I am back, and I'm just going to adjust my levels a little bit. There we go. That's fine. Um, okay. We'll leave it in because it's all part of the part of the thing. Um, yes, I'm Duncan Casey. This is Richard Jackson to my upside down left. Hello. Well, but there's no there's no video, so it doesn't there's matter. no video. So it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Um, <laughs> in my <laughs> left channel. Is Richard Jackson? Um, yeah, welcome back. Today we so we're, we're doing a commentary. A commentary. I know. Um, remember those children um, <laughs> who are now uh, old enough to drive. Um, yes, we're doing a we're doing a commentary to uh, Prey 2020. <laughs> Prey. When was it? When did this come out? Last year. Last last year. Yeah, 2022. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. 2022. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is when we last did the commentary. Uh, so it's not actually. Believe it or not. Um, so yes, we thought we would just uh, give our real time opinion on this. We did review, or you reviewed it. I, think. I reviewed it. Yeah, very yeah. positively. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I I enjoy it a lot. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. But we'll get into that over the hour and forty minutes of its uh, delightfully conservative runtime. Doesn't need to be a three hour fucking extravaganza setting up nine sequels. (laughs) Turns out you could just tell a story. How the fuck about that? Um. (laughs) Very good. Very good. Well, okay, let's just dive into it, shall we? If you guys are watching along, please get your copy of Prey ready. Uh, I guess you'll be watching on Disney Plus here in the UK and on, what is it in America? Hulu or something? Hulu. Hulu. Who knew? Count count me in. Let's watch. Dan Trachtenberg's Prey. Okay. If you're going to watch with us, please get your copy of Prey on Disney Plus or Hulu. Oh, he's back. He's back. I can see him. Hello. There you go. Um, please get your copy of Prey ready and uh, press play at the sound of the... No. Um, we'll press play. We'll count you in in the style of Terminators to um, Electric Boot. No, what is it? Ter- Judgment uh, Days. Judgment Day. Judgment Days. Um <laughs> So please, uh, I will count you down, and on turn, turn, three, two, two, one, turn. Yay! Come on! Oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> okay. This is the thing when you were doing it on a streaming platform, and it's like you've you've left it there for a while, and it goes, hey, what? Oh, <laughs> and it has to yeah. like buffer and like. Oh, it does that thing where it's anyway. partially asleep, doesn't it? Where it kind of yeah. like, it goes a little bit grey. Yeah. 20th century studio no longer fox no longer fox part of the disney machine um yes. so here's here's my my kind of only real frustration i think with this uh mm-hmm. is that i really think they should have cloak and daggered this and because what was yeah. quite fun about this is they dropped it on streaming without really t- making a huge fanfare and I mm-hmm. think they should have cloak and daggered it because there is potential then that we all would have realised this this was a Predator movie at a certain point. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, kind of still call it Prey, but don't use the same font, and people might speculate. But, like, and I get from Disney's perspective, it's a franchise that not a lot of people had a lot of faith in considering the previous entries, and, you know, they've got money to make. But I think the viral, the self-governing viral campaign of like they dropped a fucking 17th century predator film without telling us would have been really cool like, I think really so cool. I think if you'd if you'd called it Pre- Prey is a good tip off and don't do the mm. font don't use the predator font and just call it Prey you could, there's so much of this that you can just show that has no, no you know them running away from something but you wouldn't have to say what it was yeah and, and then, it's tied around a coming of age story and everything and yeah, you know, it's got... and then just leave it at that, and then I no, I agree with you because that that in a way is almost like your, it, it's sort of almost like your antagonist, isn't it? It's like he's cloaked. It's you know, it's all kind of bit yeah. baked in that it's 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 a hidden thing, um, and I would agree with you and keep it low key and let it surprise people is really the way you want to go, isn't it? Would have been um, so cool. I think can you imagine with because I yeah. can't remember. There's the moment that I really liked, and I'll talk about cinematography in this film because I think it's fucking lush. Um, mm. But when the predator picks the bear over its head and it just gets soaked in blood, and there's a 
a blood soaked cigarette cigarette there's a blood soaked uh, silhouette oh. of of, yeah. of 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 the villain it's like oh that's a predator and i can't remember if it's the first time we see it i can't it's been a while since i watched this but like can you imagine the fucking shitstorm on social media if halfway well, through it, the movie it's revealed to be and revealed like that like well it isn't know. the first time it it does it's seen because obviously it's seen right at the start it, here like you see it soon, oh they do it like, okay and it's like why do you because I, I think it, i know i know how the conversation goes right which is that like well the audience already knows what it is so why why sort of try and tee it up as a thing and it's like yes but the, the, the that's true but the characters don't and it's like people will still go with it you know it's better to have that um sense of intrigue and sense of you know uh, anticipation than to go well you already know what this fucking thing is and then show it sort of meaningly i i do think there there there's parts of this film that frustrate me because i kind of go like you've lent more into the procedural than i don't think it th- has nailed its theme down as well as it thinks it has mm. at, at certain points i get that it's a coming of age story <clears throat> i get that but i don't think it, it it's difficult because you kind of go like well in the first one, the predator represented, you know, the undoing of masculinity and the kind of the, you know, showing us how ridiculous all that is. The tough guy image that is, you know, that was yeah, baked John McTiernan was... very knows, very much knows what he's doing. With yeah, that stuff, right? and so it's kind of like that doesn't really apply or well, can't really apply here. And it's kind of like, which is fine, and it's an interesting way to look at it. But it's kind of it doesn't really because at the end it just sort of turns into the same thing again. Yeah, I mean, no, like, plot for, um, the kind of beat for beat, like, the, the three acts are Predator, right? But yeah. It's, you know, it's it's come from a different angle, so instead of, like, you know, because it it's still about warriors, right? Like, because she's yeah. a warrior. And the theme running through it is that because of her, she's considered low status because she's female and she wants to go into the traditionally male role, and that's the thing that was challenging, but she proves herself to be equal and all that. Mm. Um, whereas the the previous movie was a, was kind of looking at masculinity from a different angle and John McTiernan very much knowing what he's doing with that. Um, yeah. But ultimately, the three acts are broadly the same and she ends up having to beat the Predator, which of course, you know, which I'm fine with, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't say this with any... I, I just mean, I suppose, there are things in it that I think the predatory procedural stuff gets in the way and it feels a bit like I think what it is is it feels a bit like they've been very creative with the veneer that's hung over the kind of predator you know substructure yeah the kind, like. the kind, kind of, of um, the, the, you know if you want to call it kind of law you know like mm. the predator is what you're referring to the predator procedural stuff it's probably mm. I don't know focusing on that a bit much doesn't show a lot of faith in the film in a way because it's like no no your story's great it doesn't matter how the predator yeah. works his bum it, it's not you know yeah. whereas the fucking youcher bumming wiki wiki pedos would be all over it but but the thing is it's things like her you know like her seeing because doesn't she have she has a plant that cools your body temperature mm. and it, and there's a guy who she's given it to the kind of See, the, like, yeah the, the, this kind of yeah, doesn't necessarily tell you that's a predator, but something's come from the sky, something aliens there, and I don't yeah. know. Well, it'd be fine I, I if perhaps... that was all it was, you know. Yeah, what if that literally pre- was all you saw. We've talked about then... this before. Like, predator fucking fails to bury the lead by showing you a spaceship out uh, doors, yeah. and it shouldn't. Yeah. It absolutely shouldn't do that. And I don't know if that's a studio note, but it should not do that. Like, you know, because but I don't know. I'm not in charge of these decisions. I'm not fucking Fox in the eighties. I certainly haven't it just smacks of cane to be fox in the <laughs> It just smacks of sort of a lack of faith in the audience, and I get it. Mm. I guess you know when you're putting up a lot of money for these things, I do understand it. But it's kind of like there just needs to be a bit, a slight element of risk taking that isn't, you know, that like not in a silly cocaine fueled, um, <laughs> uh, you know, Shane Black way, because mm. that that to me as well is just sort of like safe. You know, it's like, oh yeah, give us Shane Black. He knows what he's doing, and we'll just step, we'll Which just check the is fuck just, out. <laughs> but the, but yeah, but then they checked the fuck in though, didn't they? Because they hated it. Well, yeah. And really, so it's like the Shane Black one is just. I know Fox fucked with that at every stage, but it sounds like that. I I do not think there's a Shane Black cut of pre, of the Predator that's good. There's so much no. structurally wrong with it. It's just like, and on paper, when it was like Shane Black's doing a Predator, I was like, fuck yes. What I wanted was Shane Black, because this was 65 million bucks, right? Which these days for a franchise movie is nothing. What you should be spending, though, that's Precisely. the target. You exactly. Know, yeah. Send someone off who's got a good. Dan Trachtenberg, I believe, pitched this. Like, I could be wrong there. 
they've got a fucking strong pitch. They were like, yeah, go make that for $65 million, which is still an obscene amount of money, but for a movie, a Hollywood movie, it's basically nothing. And look yeah. how strong it is. It's a really yeah. good angle on the existing material told really well. And I'll get into the visuals of the film because I really, really oh, like it's it. Stunning. It's stunning. Visual, visual storytelling in this is just... Yeah. i tell you what's yeah. quite interesting because this has a thing where... So there's a, there's a Comanche language version, which is a dub. Yeah. Um, and so it was shot in English but dubbed into Comanche. And it's kind of like... I've, I've heard from people who do and don't speak that language that ultimately it's a dub and dubs dubs are as dubs are they're never that great but it's like there's a version of this with the strong visual storytelling where it's like apocalypto or or passion of the christ where there's like you know it's i don't understand it but the the storytelling i really think the the so jeff hunter shot this with tratsburg like the strength of the visual storytelling of this is fabulous there's these Mm. really great little sequences and there's this really good sense of being watched and and being stalked and and then all of that kind of is is turned i mean this is lush the stuff where they're grinding this stuff up in the heart like all of that looks like it's from a historical epic like i, I it's yeah. fag- fucking fantastic well again they, they've spent the money in the right places you know they spent mm. the money on setups not on cast there's no there's yes. no famous people in this which yeah. i you know i think is a good idea you know that because Again, it's high concept. That's the point. You know, there's setup. So, because this is this is something I don't know. Maybe not everyone gets this, but it's like a lot of you'll you'll end up spending a lot. Of, like if you work on a very low budget thing, you don't have time for setups because yeah. you're trying to get so you're trying to cover off so many pages in a day. Yeah. And you know whether that's TV you're, or film, you're running and, and fucking gunning all day, and it's just we've yeah. got the location, point the camera that way. It's a waste of time yeah. to storyboard almost short list. It's a waste of time because you, you're never gonna. Yeah. You know, but but like you say, the 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 primacy that's been placed on visual storytelling in this, um, and and everything that, that it just that's where money. I mean, I wish more was done like this because you've 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 got a new fresh face cast, brilliant. I mean, obviously I'm going to be for that. I mean, not that I'm that fresh faced mm-hmm. anymore, but you know what I mean. It's like giving people opportunities in a big what is essentially a big franchise. I hate that word, but it is. Um, and and it's all the better for it. And like you said, this is easily head and shoulders above pretty much every attempt at a Predator film since the first one. I I, I am a big apologist for Predator Two, but even I have to say, like as a film, this is probably better. I also, you know? when I watched this for the first, because this I did think of you when I watched this because when they did the pistol handover, which I felt was a little <laughs> bit tortured, like it's one yeah. it doesn't need to be there. However. For people such as yourself, like it's like they're saying, "Don't worry, we love Predator Two as well." That's what that yeah, is. I, it doesn't have to be I mean, there, that, but it's a no- lovely little kind of. I don't think it's one of those things. If I think about that too much, I'm like, "There the really struggles to, for that." Because at some point, the Predators have to get that back off her, so it makes you wonder what happened. Well, and also like because that thing at the end, like she goes back to the camp. Well, spoilers, but she goes back to the camp with the Predator's <laughs> head and the flintlock pi- pi- pistol, and it's like, why didn't you take all the Predators? tech because that might have stopped settlers from <laughs> imagine if like <laughs> might have rewritten history a little bit yeah, if they could yeah, fucking cloak yeah. themselves and had like an auto tracking dart gun or whatever and a working a fit, shield uh, that's impenetrable oh there you go there's a predator <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. Pre- it's like yeah, don't do that but that that's not uh-huh. the release strategy this was always a predator film um but i just love to fantasize of an alternate reality where we all found out and the first shot was a predator getting soaked in bear blood when it's invisible that would be incredible be to so be good. fair to them the marketing was still quite you didn't see much of the predator at all no but it and had the, the fun trailers. you know and, yeah and everything and she's got i love the the the, the image of uh, amber mid thunder with the um the predator blood smeared on her face that's great yeah that's good but also i don't want that i want it to be a surprise but anyway um, yeah <laughs> but it's fucking and also Amber Mid Thunder, that's a fucking name and a half, isn't it? Like that's <laughs> <laughs> It is. Yeah. It's like if my she name was Thunder. Rick Brick Smasher. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just it's like, yeah. oh okay, wild, cool, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, deep hole, my friend. Uh, yeah, well indeed, yeah, yeah, there's nothing stopping me apart from me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll never be Rick Brick Smasher with this this, this attitude. That's for sure. <laughs> Brick Smasher. I don't fucking <laughs> 
I usually see, see my go to tough guy name is like Rex Thundercock, but her name's already Thunder, so it do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a hat on a hat. Yeah. I can't use two thunders in that joke. Yeah. But she's um, mid. Yeah. Mid, mid. Oh yeah, well the kids call things mid now, don't they? So it's kind of okay thunder. Oh, yeah, mid oh, means okay. kind of middle tier. It's like, oh, I'm so yeah, down right. with the kids. Listen to me. I'm forty in three weeks, everybody. Hoorah! Oh wait, no, two and a half. I got weeks. asked. I don't think it will happen, but I've been asked to sort of help pitch for for an event, shall we say? Um, but the 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 the, the um the the what was what's the 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 main thing or the 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 clinch or whatever that it has to be the the, the have to have is that they want Stormzy to to perform at it right. and I was like uh and I, and I went like I know I've heard that name but I don't know who that is <laughs> I had to look it uh, up and I was like well oh, yeah it's not my yeah I've uh, Stormzy so I quite don't quite imagine is cheap <laughs> no I mean this isn't a thing where they're worried about that particularly but uh, okay it was like All a right. kind of but I was also like you're gonna struggle because fucking hell he's a busy um, dude Stormzy. Uh, yeah. you know but anyway there you but anyway go. that was just the cool. prey John, the, the prey. Uh, my name's John Prey. I'm going to pray you. Anyway, um, um, what? So, <laughs> so Dan Trachtenberg did uh, Cloverfield Lane, and mm-hmm. him and Jeff Hunter have both done like a bunch of TV. So he's directed episodes of The Boys. He did a play test episode of Black Mirror. So he's not like some this scene, this demonstration of the food chain. So I'm going to completely interrupt. Yeah, I love this. It's like, because the film, this is a perfect piece of dialogue free. It's not terribly subtle, but you go from ant to rat to snake to predator. It's great. Mm. Like, it's just a lovely visual representation of something being at the top of the pyramid, right? Mm. It's spot on. I think it's lovely. You don't need a character going, well, I would imagine he's some kind of apex predator. No, there's a fucking 15 second scene of visual storytelling. So I heard someone complain about it. They said that, that oh, it's like, well, why is it just going after like snakes and because like, it's it wants um, isn't the point. It's trying to find the most advanced or most dangerous hunter. But it's like I, it's implied in this in some ways that this is the first predator. Yeah, that I landed on Earth. So it, it never it might, says it's it just figuring out what. Yeah, it's it's it, yeah. it's a hunter and an explorer. If you send a hunter goes to a new territory for the first time, of course they're going to express curiosity. You know, it's trying yeah. to find because it find because specifically what the predator does in that scene is it watches where that chain stops and it observes that nothing is coming for the snake so yeah. it's an examination of well this is a, a predator of sorts like what you know I've yeah. someone said to me this looked like television and I wanted to kick them up their fucking ass it's just like I know Probably. television looks amazing now but like yeah I'm just like and it came is... out on television that's the annoying thing yeah. but it is kind of like so yes technically it does because it is but also it's not and you're right and this is shot like a film it's got cinematic language all yeah. like, for days I think it's fantastic and I and I agree with you I, I would say it's a shame that I don't think this got a cinema release at all did it I don't believe so no I don't believe so and I get it it's deeply I, fr- came off the back of Covid you know I, I get it yeah it's, it's just frustrating that because you, you kind of think well you know the last Predator film that came out in cinemas was The Predator which obviously didn't do very well mm. but there were yardsticks you know there were things ways of saying measuring it against that whereas with this whole thing about like not releasing streaming numbers and stuff it's like well we'll never really know if this did better than any of those or yeah you know I mean it definitely got yeah because it's so opaque isn't it and it's like because mm. you don't get the it's not like when you get the cinema charts that we have or, or whatever and you know do, like the streamers don't like to reveal their metrics and stuff and they're busy writing off things against tax and shit. It's like uh, mm. this one seemed to do well from the critical response, but we'll never really know the numbers. Like everybody seemed to watch it, like everyone, you know. Mm. And do you know what? It's a great standalone. You don't have to have watched any Predator or anything to get this. Like it doesn't yeah. lie. Yeah. The, the Predator comes. They fight the Predator. There you go. Good night. Uh, my wife and I, my wife watched it with me and really liked it. And I don't think she's seen the others. Yeah, I watched so. it with uh, with Sai. Uh, our, our type she bleed gaffer and um, mm-hmm. yeah he really fucking liked it man and he's watched Predator and stuff but he's not like watched all of them and stuff like that and I was like hey I'm checking out this new Predator movie today do you want to chill out with me he's like yeah I'll watch that and uh, he had a great time you know there's no there's yeah. absolutely no requirement to be steeped in, in Predator lore to get this um, you know there's bits and stuff sure. in there but um, so this is what I kind of think with this as well like uh, surely 
surely the approach now is just anthology predator films like do a yeah do, right yeah like some guy on twitter or whatever was like do one in fucking feudal japan like it's like yeah cool and then if you want maybe do one in the future you could do that for 60 million dollars you don't need all this money to do you know um whatever do one on the fucking moon i don't care if as long as it's interesting i mean you do probably have to move away from warrior culture does warrior stuff warrior culture gets attacked warrior culture defeats the predator because that you can't just remake predator in different settings every <laughs> couple of years but um you know yeah i'm i think I'm, it just needs to they, they need to nail down a, a theme this like i say this sort of has one but it loses it really in a way it sort of i don't know i i suppose it's kind of like well, it doesn't it doesn't but i think they need to they do need to find a way to kind of yeah each time be like well what are we saying with this yeah, you know, I mean, I think the thing mean? is um, that the pro- the problem is is that I'm a big fan of Predators. You not so much. You're a big fan of Predator no. Two. Me not so much. However, I think you you know people seem to like Predator Two. They seem to like Predators and they seem to like Prey. And the problem with Predators, Predator Two, and Prey is it's all the plot of Predator in a different setting, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. And and it kind of like have we discussed before? It's like what's what's the mileage in this really? Um, you know, and it needs to be because yeah. the fucking what I'm what I'm kind of like weary of is kind of like oh yeah, so we've done this one, then we've done one where Predator attacks the Beatles, and then we've done one in Japan, and then we've done one in a zoo, and that's leading up to our Predator shared universe where they all meet. Up. No, 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 no. Fucking. But that's spreadsheet like, spreadsheet filmmaking all over, isn't it? It's like well, I did it with the Avengers. It's like. Bleep. But yeah, this isn't that. Like, what? Well, that's baked into the source material of Avengers. Like, they're comic books. They've always done that. Like, you know, that's why that worked. Yeah. I think not that you know because Star Wars is doing a similar thing. But um, so you know about uh, Alien Romulus, the new Alien movie that's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I I think cause, yeah, indeed. Um, that's I think it's directed by Fede Alvarez, who did like the Evil Dead remake and stuff. And uh, I have no issues of how the Evil Dead remake was directed, but I'm not a fan of it. Um, it's set between Alien and Aliens, and I think that I think that 20th Century Films slash Disney put these franchises in a basket, and I'm kind of hoping that Alien Romulus is because someone done a good pitch and got their Alien pitch made. Instead of the mm. fucking deep lore shit that Ridley Scott made. Sorry, but he did. Like, and, yeah. uh, you know, although I, I really hope that someone did a good pitch and then th- that's what was getting made and it's going to be interesting. Like, you know, I hope they've got one eye on this and they're like, okay, that worked. Because I don't know what the budget is on Alien Romulus. I hope that it's 70 million or something, you know, yeah well i mean you know i just again that's another that's yet another one where it's like you've said all there is to say if you really are <laughs> yeah. just reaching for the fucking that mean well, hey, you know that's like, that, that you know mm-hmm. yes but i think we were after the alien stuff that's gone on to to phrase it delicately like mm-hmm. we probably would you know if someone said to our, either of us after the predator they're making another predator we'd be like fuck off but now we're on the other, we're on the other side of prey, and I'm hoping for a brighter future when we're on the other side of Alien Romulus. Going, oh, they did a good anthology-ish fucking alien movie, great. Set in a Dixon. Yeah, I guess. Set in a Dixon. I think the thing that these things is is that they are because they're such high concept, but essentially slasher movies. You know, I think mm. that's what they've lost. I think they've they got so bound up in the like, but it's an interesting oh, you know, God. monster. Like, and it's Predator like yeah, but... went, uh, Alien went so far up its own fucking ass. It's just unbelievable. So, oh my god, yeah. yeah. I like books okay. and opera. Okay. <laughs> Good. It, it just, yeah, I, and, and, yeah, I just, and the origins of man. It's like, but why? And yeah. what, what are you saying about yeah. that? Like, doesn't seem to be much. It's just that a, a robot got it wrong, misquotes Ozymandias, and therefore I will kill everything. It's like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I. It's just. I. Yeah. I find it all deeply tedious, not at all gratifying, and and it's the same thing with well, it is. I mean, like fuck, really, Scott. No, you. You. I, I fully agree. <laughs> I fully it, agree. At this point, I just don't give a toss anymore. It's kind of like, well, you know, I. It. it, it yeah. 
and everyone knows it. It's not like you know. I'm not. I'm going to stand here, and I'm. I'm sorry, but the emperor does have no clothes on. Indeed, it was toilet, yeah. and and as were all the. You know, I mean, the thing is, I I didn't. What I liked about Predator Two is that it lent into that trashy, um, hyper violent world, which the first one does exist in. You oh, know, God, everyone yeah. sort of thinks yeah, that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's just in a jungle. So in a jungle, rough. Um, it just exists in. <laughs> I've broken in, your in a brain, different setting. I? <laughs> yes, you have. Um, Whereas, you know, the, obviously being set in a more of a, you know, in a city, it just was more apparent that it was a heightened sort of almost future reality. Mm. Uh, so um, so I didn't mind that. I think what Predators, to me, was just a sort of cheap remake in a lot of ways. And I just didn't, I just felt it was I'm, really... I'm, I'm all right. Because like, I, 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 it's kind of about an hour 45 or something. It's not over long. It's fun. It's got a fun, interesting, diverse group of characters. You know, it's funny when it needs to be. It expands the lore in a way that isn't procedural. It's kind of like, oh yeah, they have preserves in space. I have a good time with it. I really like it as a movie, and I think it does some interesting things visually. Um, mm-hmm. I think the new Predators are like shit, but <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you know, don't yeah. worry, they chucked a classic one in for us fucking nerds. Uh, so, you know, that's where we differ. I think as we've as we've discussed before, because <clears> as you know, we only speak about the Predator on this channel. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's one of those things where I'm not going to die on that hill. I don't really care. It's just sort of a thing for me. I, and it's probably based largely in nostalgia because I watched Predator 2 growing up, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Well, you know, Whatever. that's that's you like what you like, right? Because there's no point. I've never, yeah. entered, there's no, you know, I'm never going to waste my time entering into a discussion with you <laughs> going like, by the time I finish, Duncan will not like Predator 2. Like, why <laughs> fucking <laughs> madness is that? I know, exactly. Well, you know, so it's fine. But I just, yeah, I... I I I can't, but I I still I still think it's like, you know, but, but don't get me wrong. Like Predator Two with Danny Glover walking around going like, he he's he can see in the dark or whatever, and <laughs> whatever. he likes this, you know, and and like and just f- like fumbling through shit which we, that we already know. I mean that is the problem. Well, that's my you it's know, and then my and the Yautja yeah. Prime of it all is just deeply front, like just so fucking boring. Yeah. Um, because you know it's not tied to anything thematically. You know, it's like that's that's what people don't seem to get. Mm. It's like the reason why it's like the the reason why all these classics work really well is because they've established a theme and everything serves that or speaks to that in some way, more or less. You know, um, the, and they well, just don't. Like, seem like, to, it's like story like Terminator Genesis, right? There is nothing yeah. that made the mistake of thinking, let's make it look like that thing you remember. That's what you liked, and it's like no, no, that like it's, it's a phrase I use a lot, and I stole it from Stuart Lee. But Terminator Genesis is not a film that's troubled by a duality of meaning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's nothing. Yeah. What are the themes here? I don't know. AI is bad, I guess. Why don't you have a granddad robot? It's like there's nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> you know, for for something that's that's rooted in the fear of technology, and the Predator is is in its own way kind of rooted in the fear of technology because it seems to be, it seems to be that the technology is the thing that's kind of evil and and resisting technology and and not depending on it is what wins the day in a predator film and something that amber mid thunder's character does in this is that we f- we see it's constantly demonstrated to us that she's a good medic she knows plants mm. and she knows nature but then she's also kind of a warrior as well um yeah you know i w- we should pr- just uh because uh, i know sometimes people can be frustrated with us not talking about what's on the screen um yes and sometimes this looks like a really expensive remake of Cannibal the Musical, but that's another discussion. Um, I'm looking at this, so I haven't seen, you know about Gareth Edwards' most recent film, The Creator? It came, mm. out, it came out in those cinemas. You might remember those from the olden days. Um, <laughs> so that was 80 million. I don't know how it's done, but you know it got a wide release. It was $80 million, and it was kind of famous because it was shot on the Sony FX3, which has a very high ISO native ISO which means it's very you can go really high ISO push the ISO which means exposure if with kids at home um, with very little noise and the reason I bring this up is because he was like well what would happen was we had, we had this budget but on the day we would be stood in a dark field in moonlight and I needed to get a shot and I could just use this FX3 and whack it all the way up and then I wouldn't even have to bother the gaffer but I'd be getting that with the natural light and I'm looking at some of the nighttime stuff in here and it's a really this film has a very natural look that I like because they're kind of doing a kind of orange and teal here right now but it mm-hmm. looks really minimal I think a lot of the daylight stuff is kind of texture, textiles and bounce boards and I think 
you know of course it's a fucking 65 million dollar movie and obviously there's all kinds of like uh, lighting trickery here like doing fires and stuff but i like it's very naturalistic at all times which i really like it's got a lovely there's a constant sense of motivation of light like there's really nice motivated light in this there's very nice reactive light in this um mm -hmm. it's very soft tones kind of roll off across the faces and stuff and then there's a focus on camera movement that I love. There's this constantly kind of creeping camera. They love to do like the camera just moving across the grass and there's lots of kind of focus pulls and stuff at just the right moments. It feels like it's got a real cadence and a real rhythm. And mm. it's one of the things that really struck me about this is that I love the visualism of this film and I love how it allows the visuals to tell its story. Um, and it's a fucking yarn about a monster from space, you know, it, 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 and there and there is nothing wrong with that. That's what kind of bothers me. Is kind of like, oh, that doesn't deserve to be railway. And it's like, of course it does. Of course, it's, it's, it's just as valid as any other story. But it, you know what people don't seem to realise is, you know, all this stuff is gravy. I'm going to eat a dry lump of cinematic beef. You're going to cover it in delicious gravy. You know, just because it's <laughs> not the main protein. Well, th that's what I mean about them sort of the, getting the veneer right because it's hung over something that they probably couldn't change anyway. You know, it had to be the beats were there mm. you know mm -hmm. must have this predator introduced that da, da, da. so they're quite clever with it and the predator lure stuff that they mess with that we do deride so much but it's actually you know they do it well they sort of they fiddle with the predator just enough i don't really like the design of it especially when it takes its helmet off but yeah whatever i look what i Who like cares? it's yeah yeah because this is the thing that like, i don't think they've ever it's like a horse yeah it's odd looking they've they've got a, so to, to, to you know be, be nakedly hypocritical for a moment um it seems the explanation they've given is that like it's more of a desert predator so that's why it's kind of more minimal it's kind of bonier and it's kind of it's it's a predator that's supposed to have existed in a kind of low a very dehydrated environment let's say and i'm like yeah okay good you've thought about that cool i'm all right with it that's cool that you there is rhyme and reason to it like the predators mm. the super predators in predators it's kind of like someone said can you make that more cooler please you know what I mean? It's like, it's bigger, <laughs> yeah. right? And it's black, it's covered in bones, right? And uh, uh, it's blades longer. And it's like, okay, no. These guys have kind of, wh whether you like it or not, they've thought about it. There's rhyme and reason to it. and They're the sort of super shredder to the shredder. Yes, indeed. In, term uh, in Turtles 2. Yeah, in <laughs> in <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Go ninja, go ninja, in go. Hold on, what's indeed. the... Because uh, they call it the feral predator... I think, or the savage predator. It's like, okay, cool. Do you know what? I'm I'm not mad about the design. I don't hate it either. Um, I think no, it's I don't. Enough. I don't hate it. I'm not. Again, I'm not excised enough to get angry about it. And yeah. it's not. It blends with the film perfectly well enough. It's not like you like you said. The super predators stand out because they simply don't fit the design of the rest of the yes. film. Yes. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the, in this, they, they it does. It feels like of a piece. It feels designed to go with this film, yeah, it, which is fantastic. A so, film yeah. that exists in very earthy tones as well, I must say. So the kind of the metallic side of the Predator. And if you look at the Predator, it's more kind of like a man in a loincloth. There is less technology on it and stuff. And mm -hmm. like, yeah. uh, it has that that sort of going for it. And, and yeah, it's kind of, it's good. Because, you know, this is a film that is very strong on costume design and art design because it's period and the predator has to kind of fit with that and mm. you know it's really stripped back and paired back and uh i mean it's kind of it's a funny thing i i don't think anyone's ever beaten the first predator design however i think if this film's i would like this less if it starred a classic predator because it's like no one's done anything yeah. do you know what i mean see this that that focus pull from the rabbit to the dog yeah, yeah, yeah. constant reminders of of a food chain you know, I think it's yeah. just good visual language. It's, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And again, this is this is nothing you kind of haven't seen before, but it's framed ever so slightly differently to make it interesting. You know, I, I find that really, really cool. Um, go make more fucking take all your well, it, like make a fifty million dollar Terminator movie. My bottom line is never make another Terminator movie. But if you're gonna, someone comes to you with yeah. a pitch, make one for fifty million dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. See, I like this. I do, and you're right. And it's a simple. It is a simple thing. You're just trying to make a simple point. And I, and again, the the theme, such as it is here, is is consistent. Um, you know, it works. It works really well. Um, but yeah, I know it's like don't make another bloody Terminator film. And if you do, 
you know, I've said this before. It's like, I mean, oddly, the, and it seems an odd thing to sort of argue, but I love that he's got some of the Predator's blood in his mouth. And stuff. Yeah, he cool. kind of. Um, I like the. Uh, they've added this kind of fiery effect when he activates his cloak or the cloak gets hit. So now yeah. it's a kind of orange. And yeah. I, I dig it. It's kind of hellish. It's demonic, right? And yeah. this, like, I guess really in Predator when it's Anna, isn't it? Like the. <laughs> the only woman in the film where she's like yeah. uh, you know it's been su- hunting here for centuries and it comes when it's hot and it's like this is probably the source of those legends like and you know they said they think yeah. it's a demon and stuff like yeah cool because he does the kind of orange thing right? and fire mm-hmm. in the sky you know it's elemental and then you cut, cut straight mm-hmm. to her with the fucking tomahawk look it's visual language kids it's how you tell a fucking story isn't it um, what do they call it the thunderbird or something <laughs> that's a the, Je- the name for the, it, which is the Jeff Tracy. They call what the Thunderbird. Mm-hmm. The 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 well, because they refer to because obviously she saw the fire. Oh, in the sky. In the sky. Okay, 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 okay. This I speaks to my. Like, I'm 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 arrogantly talking Coming as if out. I'm some kind of authority, but I haven't watched this for a year, so I'm just kind of like, <laughs> you know. Um, and this Neither co- have I, but I'm just the sure. procedural stuff for her is interesting because it's new. I don't know anything about Comanche culture, and she's like fucking making a throwing weapon on a cord, like you know she has her own innovation. Oh, that's great. It's fucking cool. I'll take mm-hmm. that. It's not someone bumming off about Yautja Prime. Um, well, it, it's it, you know, it's what the first one did is is that like worry, like you say, it sort of goes back to um, not relying on technology, being innovative, using the surroundings. Mm. I mean, that's why it all you know what makes sense to be in a jungle and uh, in a jungle rough. And um, and it is. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And here, you I'm know, sorry for uh, everything I've done to you. <laughs> But and here, you know, and here's the perfect. This is the perfect setting, really, because you've got all the natural predators. You've got all the, you know, um, and the 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 timing of this scene, the kind of dog mm. scene versus her and her dog, cut together, visually matching. It's saying to us, look, they're the same. You know, that's mm-hmm. what the function of this is. That's what its rhythm is. Um, well, and the implication, I presume, of calling it prey is that, like, well, who is the prey? Is the predator the prey? You know, is the yeah, you know, is, yeah, is and that, pre- that's kind of what they said about predators as well. It's like, who are the predators? Because like, you know, one, yeah. one of them's like, a, isn't he like a serial? You know, Walton Goggins, isn't he like a serial killer or something? Oh no, because spoilers mm. for predators, get off my back. Um, Topher Grace is a serial killer, but like mm. Walton Goggins is like some fucked up gnarly prisoner guy that's clearly just disgusting and awful. But then doesn't really make him better than a mercenary, does it? I mean, that's someone who kills people for money. Is that better? Like, uh, um, yeah. but yeah, who's the prey? Turns out it's the predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and also, but then also, she kind of like she's assumed to be prey versus you know because yeah. she's um, indeed you know that's what she is. But yeah, no, it's it's a uh, it does have themes. I just like I say, I I wish it could be a bit more consistent with them because I think it loses itself as we then get into the kind of the more procedural stuff towards the end once they get into that camp with the um they're like privateers or something are they the, like dudes yeah um I just you know it seems like she runs into a that, like the guy she gives she gives that guy um the flower that makes his body temperature lowered which is then what sort of supposedly tips her off that it sees with heat vision even though she wouldn't have a possibly have a concept of what that is <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, like just because yeah, yeah. he was cold doesn't mean that's why the oh, president he's see. using broadband okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and um but you, you, so that's what I mean and there's a guy she meets that guy who's like a, he's a polyglot right and that's how she's mm-hmm. able to talk to him and it's kind of like great but you know what again that could mean something it's things like when she runs through the bog and it's sort of set up for the end and you kind of go yeah but why there's no there could be a reason worked in as to why her and her brother and anyway but but like i say i don't want to get too mad about it why has he skinned a load of it hasn't it's it's the privateers because they're collecting pelts oh of course sorry but that's what i like because it kind of we understand that the predator skins things that's good yeah yeah yeah. that's good yeah um, i like that yeah I'm so, I'm being probably unduly harsh on this. <laughs> I, I just want the predator to come out in a massive fur coat. <laughs> it's like a big, big buffalo hat. Coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that lean, walking and with the lean. Equally as I would like them to be a su- surprise predator film, I also would have liked them to have ruined it with that. Just <laughs> yes. this predator has a cane with a dollar sign on it. It's like dollars don't even exist yet. He's wearing like a big, a big coat. 
Yeah, I just so I don't I don't know. Like I think the the Japanese thing is way too root one, but like give us anthology because there was the um you know that I don't want to refer to him as that guy because I think we've got degrees of separation to him. But there was that Predator fan film about the Crusades. Do you remember that? It's on like oh, YouTube, right. and it's it's really yeah, cool. Vaguely. Like it's not like it's not the most amazing filmmaking in the world, but they've got a cool Predator costume and it's set in the Crusades and so yeah, historical period Predator stuff. I think is 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 the way to go. I don't know. Like, but again, I'm sort of like, uh, what do you? Because I am someone who isn't particularly enamoured by slasher films. I find them quite tedious. And what I like is like, I think Freddy versus Jason is fucking excellent. As I've said, I think Jason X is fun. Like when they just go nuts and have fun with it, I love it. I have seen Halloween, by which I don't mean Halloween. And I also don't mean Halloween. I mean Halloween, <laughs> as in the, yeah. the, the David Gordon Green, you know, the most recent one. And uh, mm-hmm. I got no desire to see the other two because what happens is Michael Myers breaks out of a place, then stabs people in Haddonfield, and then someone stops him, and it ends. Mm. Like, Jason, or they don't. Though. Or they. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Whereas Friday the Thirteenth had the good sense to just go fuck it and turn him into a zombie like six films in, and then do one in space. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, do that. You know, because I the fucking. I didn't dislike Halloween. I thought it had some really interesting visual things in it. See, look, they're the same. He follows the same process that she follows because it's about tracking and mm-hmm. knowing the land. Um, and it's, is it a stogie? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's my stogie. <laughs> yeah, it Put it down. <laughs> yeah. um, I've totally lost my thread because I got distracted by a predator playing with a cigar. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, the, the, the slasher thing... Mm. it just gets so tedious to me it really does um when it's done repeatedly i well i think they exa- i mean that that was clearly so you've got your few iconic slashes mm. and then it's like that wore itself out very quickly and then it's been a it's been a, i think halloween as in halloween was the what was the one that could kind of exploit it a bit you could reinvent it they tried to do it with um nightmare on elm street mm. it didn't work mm. you know um I saw a bit of that. I think my wife was watching it, and I saw a bit of it, and it was like, um, they showed how Freddy Krueger, you know, they sort of they showed him being burned alive in the thing, and it was just like it, that's just it empathy. Seems all very empathy. serious as well. It's it like yeah. it's like, dude, no, this is the one where the guy has Mister Tickle arms. Like you don't. Because I like, because yeah. fright. Uh, I never got it. I was always like, this isn't scary. Wes Anderson always makes generally makes things. I thought um, his best one. Well, was, wait, wait, um, no, Wes, not Wes Anderson. Uh, what did uh, I Wes, say? Wes, Sorry, uh, Wes Craven. Wes Craven I'm saying. Yeah. Sorry. We will get Wes comments Anderson, for days I like, I like for Wes that. Anderson. I would like to see Wes Anderson. Uh, yeah, no, Street, no. But um, there you go. <laughs> that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, sorry, Wes 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 Craven. Um, his. Um, I thought a new nightmare was probably my favourite. Of I those. I More agree. Have we ever talked about this? I really fucking love. I new think nightmare. we have. Yeah, it's bonkers. Yeah. Fuck. And I think the Freddy redesign is great. And I think I kind mm. of hate. I tend to hate those kind of self those self referencing things where it's like, but what if it was in the real world? But I really I think a new nightmare is just wonky as fuck in the best possible way. I really really like it. Like uh, I, but also I will go into mm. that for nightmare when I took a left turn when it did dream warriors and, and, and stuff like that like it builds on itself and becomes interesting again and, and I really like that about it I'm not even the biggest nightmare fan just to be utterly clear um, I, can, I can say no. that now uh, the documentary is out available in HMV and other retailers by the way um, <laughs> it's a good point but yeah, yeah. Upset. Uh, Bob. yeah oh, oh, Bob. Bob 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 England Bob Bob. Uh, Bob England but uh, yeah I I don't know like because I think we've talked about this before I love what they've done here but I don't know the mileage you can get from it and I think there's been like oh yeah they're going to bring Dutch back and it's like huh really is that I don't please don't you think you want that but you don't like and it's not against Arnie or whatever it's what like septuagenarian Arnold Schwarzenegger like yeah and what and And you know that would be like I think that thing He'd die really quickly or something. It'd be one oh, of those. Oh, like, do you know what oh, I'd hate terrible. the most is kind of like, oh, uh, Amber Mid Thunder's character was captured by the Predators and kept in suspended animation for some reason, and she has to team <laughs> up. And it's just like, no, no, stop, just stop, stop, like, stop, like, stop. Like, stop. He's just, already dead. He's already dead. 
it's as well just like look just all you have to do is open your fucking eyes like what people are not that no one likes this and that you know we've got to get off this like um thing of making things not for anyone you know this thing of like i'm gonna make i mean i haven't seen it so i don't really want to pass comment on it so but like indiana jones the most recent indiana jones i gather is, is another example of one of those things where it's like we're gonna market this thing on nostalgia spend most of the time telling you it's really stupid or that the protagonist is really stupid and you're therefore stupid for liking it, mm. you know, in the name of subversion. And then at the end of it, either kill them off or do whatever. But it's kind of like, I just find all that stuff of like, well, you haven't thought about who you're actually making this for. Like, if I like this, I'm not going to like this. If I don't like this, I'm not going to like this anyway. So well, who's this for? It's this, who are you making it's it for? It's the classic thing, is it? They try to cast a wider net as possible. It's like, well, we're, we're only going to make Indiana Jones if we can, if, if we can market it directly a fictitious median person who simultaneously yeah. likes and dis- it's like the fucking and also it's like like I, you know i'll go back to this but like the remake of robocop specifically has a scene where they show the original robocop yeah. and go that's rubbish and bad and from the 80s and it's like well who's this for then mate because you've made this kind of thing that really wants to be a christopher nolan batman film but it doesn't do any robocop stuff so it's not yeah you have to any you have no right you have no right putting like dead or alive you're coming you know you could no right to reference that if you're just going to say it's shit as well particularly if your main you know? character uses a stun gun <laughs> like, oh, but it, it, there's been a know. bit of a re- reappraisal of that recently because obviously rogue city came out and there's been a lot of people kind of going like oh no actually the 2014 remake was actually really good people didn't give it enough credit and it's like you're off your rocker mate yeah. you've no idea what you're talking about i said from the trailers i said that's bad because they were like he could remember everything yeah so it was just Superman. It was just a superhero cop at that. Our point. survey says, eh, eh. yeah, it's got yeah, nothing yeah. to say. It's, 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 it's got it's... nothing to say, you know. But it also mm-hmm. goes out of its way to sort of like shit on the original thing. And it's like, yeah, but people, yeah. you know, look what do you want. Whereas this, uh, what uh, there's so much to be said for this as just this is fantastic. This scene, it's great. I thought yeah. this is the first time we saw the Predator. That's what I because I've watched it in ages and I'm a hack, but. Well, the trailer implied it, right? Because okay. the trailer, you didn't see all of this. You just saw the bear stopping, trying to get her, yeah. And then you heard like a bunch of stuff, and then it was like lifting up, which would have been quite a cool uh, reveal. I do like it, like standing up with all the blood in it. They really do like a bunch things. of that because, like, the dog when the dog mm. takes it out, it gets the green in its mouth and stuff. I love that. It's yeah. a really nice. Um, because this this visual, that's how I I would. I'd probably make you think it was a predator for long enough, but then really show it with this because he lifts it above his head, right? Yeah, like, eviscerates it. That's right. Because like the CGI is not amazing, right? But it's because it's versus the no. budget. Look at the story we fucking got out of this. There you yeah. go. Look at that. It's fucking awesome. So good. Well, because I've done that clever thing with the because the mask doesn't fully cover its mouth, does yeah, it? So the kind of so the lower mandibles, mandibles stick out. So when it's in silhouette. Even though it's got its mask on, you can still tell it's a predator because of the. And it does the thing where it's like it's like a bone mask as well, you know. And I think Mm. it's good to make it eyeless. It's it's kind of yeah, kind of impenetrable and inscrutable. And it's like yeah, cool. That's it's kind of what always. Do you know one of the things that most viscerally freaked me out about the xenomorph always as a kid was like it has no eyes, and it's just Mm. like well then it has sight beyond sight. Like how. You know yeah. what does it, yeah. was it? Can it smell me? And that's the problem. It's the it's the the alienness of it. Like you know, well, the, it's the unknowable. It, the yeah, unknowable. Exactly. Like it makes exactly. it kind of until they explain it to death. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's that. But that's the point. I've said this. I've this is such a worn out thing for me to say. But it is like stop. It, you know, the reason why that works is because we didn't know it had internal logic, but we yeah. weren't privy to it. Yeah. You know, we were following the 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 hum, You know, the the pre- protagonists discovering that. As soon as you start um, explaining stuff, it's just like, well, then it's lost all its magic. You know? Yeah, it's like what's the fucking point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robocop Rogue City was fantastic, by the way. I do keep meaning to stream it. I, I do. I had the best time with that. But uh, you know, I Good. would <laughs> obviously. But I would. Yeah. But um, well, yeah, I hear it's, it's been very. Well. It's gone down very well. Uh, so. It's fucking great. And for for a kind of the, and the. Robocop Rogue City is the video game version of this. That's a, in terms of budget, it's like a mid tier game. It's not a triple A game, and it's like, yeah, give these fucking legacy. I hate that. Give these mm-hmm. legacy licenses to someone who's going to who's not because games end up costing like eight hundred million dollars, and it's nowhere near that. It's made by a studio in Poland who made Terminator Resistance that I've talked about at great length on this channel and streamed a bunch. 
love that game it's just say they've handled it well without any interference yeah. they've just been given the license and allowed to get on with it and they've done a wonderful job you know hey, i posted this on bullies. um on my linkedin um earlier but um there's a guy there was this in the news recently that netflix um has spent 61 million dollars on carl rinch who was the guy who directed 47 oh, Ronin. Oh, I biggest know. To fame. And he spunked and he pissed it all on away. crypto, right? <laughs> yeah, well, and other things, among other things. Yeah, he's pissed away a load of it. And now Netflix have just gone, oh, well, I guess we'll have to write that off. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Like, that's the budget of this. Like, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. you could have made... And he bought, like, a bunch like, of Ferraris Stop giving stuff. shit. Like, it's like... I know. Stop fucking... giving shit to people who don't appreciate it. Like you know, what I mean, I know, there's a million of us out here with better ideas than that who are ready to go, and we would we would suck Fuck it up for me. like a quarter. The of stuff that we could we do for a million, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. fucking half a million. Yeah. Jeez, you know. I'm just sort of fed up with hearing crap like that. Like and and you know and just the 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 drawbridge pulling that's been going on. It, it, honestly, and I I don't care about talking about it now because I'm just like I. People need like I don't get me wrong. I do know people who aren't like that, and there are people who are sort of higher up in companies who do genuinely want to reach back. But it all comes down to money. It all comes down to this idea that that, that you've got to have. You know, they lean on like want it's this sort of magic bullet attitude of like get an famous person or get yeah, an right. famous director right. or get you know like someone's got to have track record. And it's like, well, yeah, but if you're not giving anyone a new opportunity then how are you ever going to cultivate that you know and why I, I think there are a lot of them have just lost this idea of being the ones who discovered someone they just don't seem to be able to do it anymore mm. Mm. so it, you know, well, I, yeah but i hear stories like that and i just think it's it, fuck. it's just the absolutely endemic risk aversion you know mm. and it's like but then look at that you risk aversion and then they've just pissed away 61 million dollars yeah there's uh, exactly a bit more of a risk because though. it doesn't it doesn't fucking track with them does it though because that's mm. <laughs> particularly netflix i mean because that guy was making a series and it's like well you cancel everything yeah. after the first se- it's why i cancel my netflix because i i can't i'm sick of getting into things that you just cancel it's like, well, fuck you then. Like, I'm not sick of investing my time in this shit because you don't have enough faith and you never give us the numbers. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. That I mean, that obviously was the source of the the actor strike and the writer strike. I think wasn't it? Or it was tied to that it, AI? Like, was one of about, yeah, it. one of many things that kind of kind of kicked that off. This is um, I like seeing bullies getting fucked up. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they're great pricks. These guys, which is sort of good. So like, yeah, you got a possum, you wanker. Mm. And they've got a bit of Dunning Kruger as well, because like he sees the the twine on her axe. He's like, "Oh, you've got a leash for your weapon." It's like, mate, she's invented mm. a retainer. This is great because this is a little bit of uh, you know tweaking your expectations because it's like a bolt gun, right? And the three things function independently, so he can kind of yeah. target them. It's nice because you just assume it's going to be a laser when it starts, uh, or a plasma, I should say. Mm. And that's great because that's mostly about her. You know that focus on her, and then it comes. You see the body afterwards. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, I like this as well though, because it's, it's also he just got a possum the same way he's about to get got. Yeah, exactly. If you know what I mean? Exactly. He's, he's arrogant. Yeah. And the pre- what you don't see is that the predator really loves possums, so he's <laughs> furious, furiously angry about what's going on here, about this situation. Um, yeah, this is where it kind of gets into you know because we haven't even got to the kind of uh, the trappers yet. You know, it's just the other kind of mm. native guys getting fucked up. But we're halfway there. Great. Yeah. 90 minutes. Oh, 100 minutes. That's the way it's done. That's the way you want to do it. It does have a slight sort of independence or independent film feel about it in the sense of just because we spend a lot of time with people in, you know, very similar looking setting. You know, it doesn't have a. Yeah. It has it has big vistas, but it's not. It doesn't feel. You know, again, because you're dealing with people walking on foot, so it's not like it can really go places. You yeah, know? and it's a small cast um, as well, right? Like it's a. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh yeah. It kind of has that. It's mad. It is mad to say it, but it's utterly apt. It has that kind of indie feel to it, and this is the thing because someone did a strong pitch and they let them go and get on with it because Disney considers yeah. sixty five million dollars uh a low risk because we live in a completely perverse society but uh, <laughs> um again mm. you know the stuff we could do for a million you know yeah. you know I, I, 
I did kind of think, going back to your point earlier, <laughs> also, by the way, you know, the grotty kind of kid in me, um, it brings the gore and the violence, which a Predator film should have. You know, just to, yeah, it scratches yeah, totally. that grotty itch that a Predator film should be bloody. <laughs> and because it's great, the fucking, uh, it's, you know, he's seen pull a dog's spine out and people get really funny about the violence. Against, well, not funny, because, but when anything sad happens to a dog in movies, people shit the bed. Um, yeah. As well, they should, because dogs are lovely. But, you know, what I mean? um, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> it, yeah, people get fucking de limbed and heads cut off and all that good shit. Mm-hmm. All the, grotty kind of he takes his fucking legs off and pins him to a bloody log it's great <laughs> and again you know i often think about the you know somewhere in this world there is a kid whose mum and dad have uh, password locked all the grown-up shit on disney and they've seen it around the friend they've seen prey around their friend's house or they figured out their mum or dad's code, whatever the equivalent is of secretly taping something off TV and watching it when they're at work. Some kid is off watching this. And I imagine it's a fuckload easier now, uh, you know, everything streams everywhere. So somewhere there's some grotty kids, like we were 25, 30 years ago, secretly watching the 18 rated movie. And <laughs> no, this is probably rated 12A now. I don't know. Ratings are so completely different. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I doesn't. Um, I guess it says somewhere. Like I think we said before, it's kind of like we just don't pay attention to ratings anymore, do we? Yeah, it's just become white noise, really. I might just check out the. Um, oh. Yeah, see what the. Oh, do you know what's often quite fun? Um, is the BBFC's notes that they give with their certificates because they've got increasingly uh, granular. Mild peril. In mild peril. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it? The one from Twister? It's like extreme weather or something. <laughs> fantastic um yeah so it's a 15 which is mad because this would have fully been a 18 um years oh ago. yeah like, i mean there's no shagging in it uh, yeah no, long, no boobs well speaking of which um because <laughs> the terminator was 18 forever and then when it came out on dvd because most people don't bother resubmit things to the bbfc because why would you because it's just a cost but they resubmitted mm. Terminator uh, around the DVD release, and it was reclassified as a 15. Um, you know, right, so yeah. certain things have been reclassified, because Terminator is so tame by today's standards. Um, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm all good with this. I'm happy with that. Um, you know, it's the way it should go. This is great. The kind of blood-soaked chase. Mm. Um, so anyway, let's talk about the uh the the 15 rating for prey prolonged sequences of threat and bloody violence run through this action-packed sci-fi prequel as a teenage girl fights to turn the tables on an alien creature hunting a comanche nation oh. tribe in the 18th century america okay do you see that oh, like, I when he takes him down and the blood starts spraying <laughs> up like it's crazy <laughs> this and it's good to cover it in a wide like that i mean that's that's a bit of a callback to they did that sort of shot in uh, predators didn't they the sort of mm. The aerial, the the aerial shot of the, the kind of grass moving, grass and everything. Yeah, this does, yeah. this does quite a lot of uh, shots of grass and plants, kind of slowly in the wind. Which mm. is, uh, well, that was my that was my wind or against plants noise. If anyone was wondering, um, yeah. So it, it it does does that kind of stuff quite nicely. Um, mm. Because this also makes me feel like we're watching Cannibal the Musical when the, when the trap has come. That's a, it's a different thing altogether. Um, the BBFC rates this uh, 0 out of 5 for drugs, 0 out of 5 for sexual violence and sexual threat, 0 out of 5 for sex, 2 out of 5 for discrimination, which seems vague, 2 out of 5 for language. Cause I don't think... What, against predators? <laughs> Who's discriminated again? I don't know. Maybe, I suppose well, maybe the Pre- Comanche. Yeah, I guess so. I can't remember. I guess because the, these French, these yeah. guys will call them savages or something, won't they? Um, maybe. Yeah. I would have thought. Uh, threat and horror, mm. four out of five. Violence, four out of five. Injury detail, four out of five. Um, I'll tell you what else it does uh, that I like. Because um, I, like, I, you know, I love violent movies. I love seeing how it's done. I love seeing how it works. I'm a ghoul. But I thought it was important, you know, when we made our, our film and I'm going to assume you've all watched it now because it's been out for over a year um, so I'll just spoil it 
Duncan gets his fucking head cut off, right? And initially, I was like, I want to show the the the, the teeth of the saw cutting into your neck, and that'd be some kind of special effect. And we talked about doing practical stuff, but for budgetary reasons, I couldn't show that. But in retrospect, I was like, yeah, there's there's one act of quite horrible violence in this film, but I think it should be uh, viewed with detachment. I thought it was more interesting to do that in a detached way. And I think this kind of, because quite often in this, you see limbs and heads flown off in soft focus because it's on Amber Mid Thunder's reactions to them. So, and, and mm-hmm. I think it's kind of like, you know, something that really annoys me, like the Watchmen movie is like, oh yeah, we need to focus on this arm being broken. And it has this kind of slightly grotty, like I said before, there's a difference between something being adult and something being mature. And I don't think, for example, Snack Snack Zyder, Zack Snyder, (laughs) I don't think he approaches violence with a kind of level. Did you like a Snack (laughs) Zyder? A a snack for your Snyder? Um, Stroop I I don't think he approaches violence (laughs) in a particularly mature way. And I think, for example, that really works in his version of Dawn of the Dead. I think it's a really great venue for that. I don't think Watchmen is the material that you apply that to, so it doesn't work. You know, and just making it no. grotty and extreme for the sake of it, I think... Well, this is the... Yeah, he confuses a lot of, like, I'm being reverential, and it's, like, with substance. Yeah, That's, it's everything pushed to a million all the time, and it's unnecessary. Like, wacky, indulgent, detail-focused violence is in bad taste and brain dead, which I love, right? But they're that's with well within the tone of what those films are doing when you apply mm. that kind of attention to detail with violence with something which is otherwise serious it kind of jars right and i would struggle to yeah. say prey is a serious film but it takes itself seriously and it's important to the tone of this film that you skirt that line well and i don't think it does that because it's trying to be censorious i think you can get away with a bunch now i guess this is an r because like you know an r is roughly equivalent to it's somewhere between a 15 and an 18 in the UK um, and and you can get away with a lot more now so I don't think anyone said no that has to occur in soft violence I choose to believe that's fully a creative choice because you do get more f- focus on the violence and stuff and the violence is here mm. but it's not just there to make you sick it's not just there because I think it's important to get reaction but that's not the tone of this film so it doesn't make sense to show the predator sticking a knife into someone's eye and twisting it around and them screaming he could do it but it would just kind of jar I think well it's what it, it's what Verhoeven did said about Robocop oh, wasn't God. it which was that, that when they censored it they made it worse because they cut away from the violence yeah. which left more to the imagination yeah. and that was the point like Mr. Kenny getting shot so you know that in this it's 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 way more in keeping with the tone and the severity with which you're supposed to take it which is that like like that shot that aerial shot of her was it her brother or whoever it was who you know they were running in the fields mm. and he just got totally taken out and all you're seeing is just like spray arterial arterial arterial, arterial whatever arterial sh- like blood shooting through the air and you just and that that's worse because your brain's going doing the doing the legwork of like shitting hell that thing is tearing him apart mm you know alive as well because it's also the sound design and you go like that's worse and they they just you know, they so for example great bit here's the line drop th- this way, was all uh this was all done in soft focus you see the guys looking down the thing the camera tracks around and in soft focus you see all those guys drop mm. and you could cut into the yeah. predator going eh, but it's not as tense you know and it's a really excellent time to bring up paul verhoeven because uh that's a really great example of that the violence in robocop and the, the the lingering detail of it is utterly fitting for the tone of that piece it makes sense in that film and in total recall more so because total recall is supposed to take place in a in a kind of hyper real dreamlike a- arena and then in starship troopers because starship troopers is supposed to be fascist propaganda come to life right so you know that's why you do that and it mm. makes sense it's it's in keeping with what you're trying to do if you drop it into an adaptation of something where that isn't necessarily the tone or just a film where it isn't necessarily the tone i, I just don't think it doesn't work and it, it just looks like what it looks like to me it's like human centipede or whatever it's like a little kid drawing swastikas and pentagrams on their maths book you know what I mean? It's just, just trying to be shocking yeah. for the sake of being shocking, and I don't think it's particularly interesting from a storytelling perspective. Um, you know, yeah. See that—that that was a good way of showing that that guy got shot by a high-powered spear. <laughs> yeah, 
by having him run off out of shot. The spear follows him, and then we cut to her POV of the. Well, it's not her POV, is it? But the, the hitting the tree with a bit of his clothes on him on it. And it's like yeah, yeah. it tells you it, everything because you, you, you don't. You, yeah, exactly. And you get desensitized to it when you're just exposed to constant levels of gore that you know also that sort of has that uncanny valley thing about it where you're just like, oh, I can't really keep seeing what's obviously fake, you know, being thrown in my face. It, mm. like, it needs, you need to bring in the audience um, and their sense of imagination. And that, this film does do that very well. It understands exactly what to show you and what not. Which is fantastic. So yeah, and I think yeah, props to it. For again, that. you know, to to uh, once again address my my own vile hypocrisy. You know, one of my issues with Predator Two is that we're watching them solve a mystery. We know the answer to. I've said that before. Yeah. This does the same. Th- That's true of literally every Predator. Yeah, film, yeah, yeah. Well, but this does. I think I think it's what Predators does well, and I think it's what this does well. It focuses. What this does is focuses more on the characters. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, wait for it. Go. Wait for it. <laughs> Here it comes. Gonna say I don't know if I'm a bit behind I you. I think but... you might be. What's your time code right now? Uh, can I get a time code? Hang on. Um, I am thirty-seven forty-five. Oh, three. Thirty-seven oh. forty-three minutes from the end. That's oh yeah, we've come. We've come out of sync. I'm just going to leave it, and we'll just have to. I don't want to fuck with okay. it. I don't know how that's happened because we're both watching it in pal. Anyway. Yeah. Um, mm. uh, I can jump forward ten seconds or something. No, no, let's not do it because I think it's going to fuck with people at home. <laughs> <laughs> so right, never mind. We're on the same page. There you go. If it bleeds, we can kill it. You said it. Done. There you go. Right. You said the line, um, which is annoying because that just takes me out. I remember seeing that and I was just like, "Oh, you had to do it, didn't you? You had to fucking say the thing." It's kind of unnecessary, and... isn't it? Yeah, you don't. It doesn't. Yeah. It's unne- Yeah, it's unneeded, uh, which is a shame because uh, you know, otherwise, mm-hmm. pray. We're very happy with what you've done. We're very happy with your work, pray. You know. Uh, but that was kind of, and it. I do love when the predator springs up from the trap. It's fucking Ooh. cool. There's a bear trap on his arm. Sorry, I lost you there for a minute. You, okay. you went all okay. Up. It's all right. We're recording our own sound. It will, it will work for the folks at home. We hope. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. No. It is. It's very. Again, it's very well realized, and it's and it's that thing of like it's very consistent with its sort of like the logic of all the predators. You know, you see all the predators kind of. Um, armaments and gadgets and what have you and I like mm. that and it's also vulnerable you know I do like the fact that it's shown to be you know it gets hit it gets bitten like the dog bites it because yes. it wasn't expecting that yes. you know. and this is the thing right you've yeah. already visually we've we've seen Predator visually we've seen it bleed therefore we know you can kill it you don't need to fucking yeah. do and it's, it's such a kind of it. What it's a tonal departure as well from the that I think that's I'm kind of unpacking this as we go but this is a tonal mm. departure, I think, from Predator, which I think is part of what makes it more interesting as a Predator film, because it's still ultimately mm. kind of like an action movie and stuff. But like, Predator is very tongue in cheek, whereas this takes itself seriously, but not in a mopey, boring way. It takes itself seriously, but, but it mm. still makes a cool, gory sci-fi action film with it. You know, because this doesn't have fucking sexual Tyrannosaurus or people listening to Little Richard or, you know, no, any of that. This that so I guess you'll have already seen this bit, but the bit where he, he opens its shield and cuts the guy's head off and the tree. Yeah. I think there's supposedly there's a motif there, isn't there? Because the the like, arterial here's that other word um, sprays out of what, from our perspective, looks like the tree trunk, right? And it's their way of saying it's sort of like the people and the trees are one. You know, it's got that kind of yeah, right. Um, you know, or Native American type vibe sort about of, it yeah yeah, yeah. Makes, they kind of really, my reaching drawing the, lines between because the trees of, the trees bleeding you know because yeah. it cut the tree if it trees yeah. we can kill it <laughs> <laughs> hey the um the the I, I will say this the guy in the predator suit what do you think of the his performance because to me he looks a bit too he's playing it a bit too much like he's just a well hard cool dude like some of the physicality of the predator is a bit like He's fight trained, which I don't. No, I'm alright with it. I've never with. really. I think so. All right. Because I think is I like the kind of because uh, yeah I think they call him the the feral predator. Like I like the sort of savagery mm. of him. I like his kind of his kind of brutal or savage approach. It's kind of not as refined as the predator as we know. He just kind of beast modes it quite a lot. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But what I mean, it's the things like it's the things like him being all kind of like. I suppose I say this. I mean, it's it's a kind of it, the physicality of it is a bit like 
um, it's a bit cool. it's a bit too human in a way. But then I then the same could be said about the first one because like you know when like Schwarzenegger punches it in the face and it sort of goes. You know, yeah, like yeah, sort yeah. of does a sort of boxing kind of, <laughs> and then like starts beating the shit out of him. You know, it's kind of like that. That is that's existed in this, so there's that you can't really complain about it. Um, yeah, it's not something I've got to say. And I do think it's good. Noticed. Um, did you see the? I suppose it's just more the way it's like he like he he he, he does things like he'll twirl his swords or whatever. Oh yeah, like yeah. He does. He, he kind of and it's he like, flares. Yeah, and it's kind of like I don't know. That seems a bit too human for me than you know it's a thing that humans do or you know the way it walks sometimes or act, like you know it like chucks things or does i don't know maybe i'm performatively yeah, 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 i enough. think there's well, you're, you're the actor here there's potentially yeah Fucking actors. anyway but i, I like it I, again i'm picking at this i need probably needlessly picking at it i do like it very much and i sort of did you um did, did but, you see the sad predator meme from this film no. that's great because there's a there's a behind there's a bts shot of the guy who plays the predator in full predator makeup you know uh mm-hmm. looking sad like the sad keanu meme hold on check your, fo- yeah. check your phone check your phone yeah. people at home may know this but there's a there's a <laughs> <laughs> so this is i'll describe it because we're in a audio track it's the predator looking sad on the, <laughs> it's the predator looking sad on the log with the caption everyone says what the hell are you no one says how the hell are you so there you go. <laughs> Talk about ruining That's a joke brilliant. by explaining it. But yeah, it's a really lovely little bit of um, bit of stuff. I, th- I think generally speaking, the warm reception and general uh, general kind of love towards this film, I think, is a very nice thing. I think it's a very good and nice thing. Definitely. Yeah. And it, it, and it, look, I, I, if, if more came in this sort of mould, I wouldn't mind it. I don't think it's... Again, like we said, it's like I'd rather see them spend the time and energy on something original and, you know, create the next Predator, you know, as in not the next Predator, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the next thing that's like that, that's that moves the game on. But um, if you've got to do Predator sequels or prequels, I suppose this is, then fine, you know, um, not a problem. I don't think I want to see Prey 2. <laughs> so you need to come up with another <laughs> Prey. Um, <laughs> like you should. Um <laughs> Uh, but I think um, you know if you can be inventive with those sort of titles and what you're thinking of making it about and not you know I, yeah okay I mean like you say feudal Japan it's kind of like it's a bit well, route you know, one what yeah it's about. a bit route one but like you, you know, know it's like the original Ronin you know yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's not the most crap I mean I'd watch it if it was like this I'd watch it but also you just got to be careful because you can't just keep making the same film you know, I, I, I... well, I think again, the pit, what's smart about this is the pitch is very unique and it's very tied in, but also its own thing and talking about something else and great. And I, it's one of those things where I can see him pitching it, and then it's like, oh, it actually did really well. Uh, how can we replicate that? And it's like, instead of thinking that, why don't you think about welcoming in other people to pitch other ideas that are similarly interesting, whether they be attached to another franchise or not? Or a pre-existing franchise or not you know what i mean and like yeah. hold more pitch meetings because that's what you should take away not how can we replicate prey again yeah you know it's like what has been just leave this as a somewhat thing. comforting about this is like and again visual match they're doing the same thing mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah 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 uh one thing that the camera went down to his wound it up went up to her, her i might i might have her, secretly yeah. synced us back up sorry everyone um well done. Uh, well done, though. Good job. Yeah, Very good. Yeah, they were, they were, forget about it. Smart. Um, <laughs> that, what has been good is that no one has announced another one. You know, it's been a year. Yeah. And it's like, wow, the next one's going to be $200 million. And it's, it's just like, no, it did well. That's great. Leave it alone. It's okay to just not for a bit. You could just not. Yeah. It's like Marvel, because I, th- I can't remember who it was. Someone recently said, some director or other was like, you know, Marvel are afraid to take breaks and they just make too much shit. And it's like, yeah, like, it's okay. You don't have to constantly have the money machine turned on. Like, you just fuck it. Oh, the fucking, oh, mate, the Oof. wound detail here. Um, yeah, you don't have to be constantly making shit. Just give it a rest for a bit. It's fine. You don't, I don't know what yeah. you think's happening. Like, then again, I don't know, financially things supposed to be a bit fucked at Disney, but I don't know how you're fucked when you're a gazillion dollar uh 
you know, organisation. Well, uh, buy all the things and then f- make terrible films. <laughs> yeah. I think you know, make a bad product and then yell at people when they don't yeah, like it. It's like, it would probably yeah. be a bad fucking model. No. And, you know, and, and churn. It's just churn. Mm. That's the problem. I, you know, and I, I say this now because I'm like, I don't want to work there. I mean, like, if they turned around and went, do you want to be in, in the next Marvel film? I'd be like, what is it? I genuinely would have to go, like, unless you're going to pay me DuckTales money to never have to do this again, then no, because this just could be just some horrible career-ending nightmare. You know, who who out of them... Because I gather The Marvels has been a giant flop. I mean, I, I didn't even know it came out because I just don't follow stuff because yeah, I simply don't give just a shit. The, the, and it's like... Just not paying attention. And the, I don't... Yeah, well, I don't think any of the sort of new faces in that are going anywhere, are they? I mean, I guess they're, they're going more than me. I mean, fucking uh, you know, uh, salt, but I, yeah, I don't know. Like, and and I've got no, I just can't be fucked watching it. Like, and I've been a big fan of the oh. stuff for ages, but I just cannot be asked with it, honestly. And it's just a little bit like I, 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 I watched. Uh, like, I thought the second series of Loki was fucking excellent. Um, How was it? Yeah, okay. I really, really enjoyed that. I must say, I really liked it. Um, good. Yeah. Well, good. I don't want these things to be well, bad no, exactly. or fail. Yeah. Or I'm not you know, saying I've this with any time relish. I would like rather, fucking, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, you know, and I want DC to get their shit together, but it seems like it just seems like the James Gunn of it all is. I'm all right with that. I think I, I fucking know. big hard reset. Make me a Superman film with the tone of Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm all right with that. Like, make it fun and poppy. That's good. I have no issue with it. Yeah. Oh no no I no I agree but I think you know I keep hearing like you know it just see, well I don't know because I don't really follow it but I, I there keep, seems to keep being new things coming out about it course corrections already before the things even started filming you know like all sorts of meg- meddling and it's just like Warner Brothers for fuck's sake yeah. leave them alone like hire your creative and then. You know, within reason, let them get on with it. You know, but well, it oh, looks like the whatever. I the cinematic care. universe gold rush appears to be over, but it's you know, yeah, increasingly difficult to tell. So I don't fucking know, man. Like, God knows. Trouble is, at our end of everything, it's kind of like it's frustrating because you sort of you work work away to try and get into a system that then keeps shifting, and and now dying. Apparently, you know, it's it really is streaming is really killed killed off like I mean cinema I think is still popular and I think people want to go to the cinema but th- it's just made it a very but then you know by the same token the f- the film industry or certainly the Hollywood end of it has been like you know they haven't moved with it they haven't gone alright you know what let's slash our budgets let's make this work better um, you know let's try and find a way to work with them and make this pay They've just tried to double down and go, right, 300 million. And it's like, why? Yeah, right. I, I mean, like... I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I, I just... Uh, and just to be utterly clear... From my end of things, uh, I would sell out in a heartbeat. You want to come to me with your dreadful pitch for a horrible <laughs> Doctor Strange film? I'll make it. Not an issue. Not an issue over at Jackson Town. That's absolutely fine. I'll sell out straight away. <laughs> Not bothered. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I would probably I, I work is work, and beggars can't be choosers, and you know, and I want ultimately to work, so fine. But I am getting to the point now. Where I'm just like, so we need that next. You know, we we're sort of at the point. Oh, I like to think anyway. We're in a position where that a Scorsese or or a Tarantino. I don't mean them and their style, but I mean you know someone can break out, and someone who who figures this out and does a good job with it. You know, but it, it again, it isn't like um, we don't really have that route to market. That you know, it's like it, time was someone could do that, and then they'd get a huge box office, and it would be obvious to everyone that it, it was a success. Whereas now, it's kind of like, well, you could make the best film ever; it goes on streaming, and then there's no barometer for how well it's done. Mm. You know, which is why I understand why people are so pissed off because it's kind of like, yeah, if streamers, especially like. With acting actors' contracts and you know creatives' contracts and stuff, it's like well, a lot of it is based on residuals and and you know how well something performs because that's the whole point. We take a hit on the front end 
that can be made up on the back end. Right. Know, everyone takes the risk together. But then it's like you can't carry that model into a system that doesn't let you know how well it's doing. Well, I, I just, so, you know, I think we're at the end of the cinematic universe gold rush, which is no bad thing, um, <laughs> if, mm. if you can call it that. No. You know, um, it's just constant frustration with this kind of stuff. And, you know, whether or not it's going to crash again, is cinema going to survive? We're just Because this, this is, by all definitions uh, to refer to the, the practices of the old world um this is a, this is a straight to video sequel or prequel you know this is yeah. the, this is and look at it it's wonderful like yeah. <laughs> you kids today if you're watching straight to video movies you have no idea of the renaissance that's occurred in straight to video over the last 15 years based on what we used to have to put up with back in the day um but the game's changed, you know. You can make this on a like this and release it like this because most people watch things at home and the cinema's too expensive. And the cinema's always been a broken model anyway because they've been forced to make money on concessions mm. because they get so fucking rinsed on ticket sales. And that leads to worker exploitation, which I experienced firsthand because I was a popcorn shoveler and they treat us like fucking shit. Um, you know, it, it's, it all feeds into itself. It's... So it's inter- It's hard to know where this is going to go, honestly, and I think we've said that a lot, but it is really hard to know where this is going. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, it's kind of... Thing, but I think what's perhaps a bit frustrating is that there isn't... I don't feel there is that... I don't know that you can find a new way to do it, apart from finding a model that would work where you simply made stuff and released it for free on YouTube. You know, which doesn't work because there just isn't the money in that. You know, but mm. it, and that's always been the problem. Is like you know, it's it, it, there is the the high budget stuff. Then there's the sort of I suppose mid to high like this. But then making something for t- how would you make something for ten million quid? Where would you sell? How can you make something? How can you make something for a quarter of a million pounds? Who do you sell that to? Mm. Because I know that like distributors and like streamers and stuff like that, and and um, you know acquisition people don't want to hear it they're not going to buy it for half a million Mm. or even a 20 percent uplift because they're going to go well i can package a bunch of films that were made for nothing for a hundred grand and then i'll sell that to them as an as an aggregate package for don't know whatever And, and it's kind of so you're just getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed at that end of the market it's all a race to the bottom mm and that you know that's just a fact i'm not you know no, it's not so, i mean it's being so, shirty or whatever that's just true that's how it was so i gaffered on a movie that was quarter of a million and that was on disc in asda you know and that's on every yeah. streaming platform the ones that you pay to rent so like youtube amazon you can pay three quid for VOD. vod type market right yeah. so it's kind of low cost low risk i don't know and like you know i've done something recently that's going to go in the same place um, I don't really want to talk about that till it's finished, but like it, it's you know it's going to go in the same place. So someone's making so, you know on the ground staff we get our day rate right, so we're taken care of, but we're all the below the below the line people. So I don't know mm. what the the return is on something like that when you pop it on streaming, but that seems to be because now it's interesting to me that you know I've got I have two movies available in stores. Um, but but you know there's stuff on disc that I've worked on in, in head of department roles that are on physical media and I'm looking at them kind of going like, I don't really know who this is for however this is a venue for me to talk about um, Barry Levinson's uh, overlooked ex- neo-expressionist neo-surrealist ma- uh, masterpiece Toys starring Robin Williams it's uh, an amazing movie. But this is what I've come up against recently. And I'm also finding it with Short Circuit too, for very different reasons. Um, we've all been press ganged into the world of streaming. I got rid of loads of discs. I've kept some back. They're kind of harder ones to find. I kept some discs back. And people are kind of like, oh, why have you got a DVD player? Why have you got a Blu-ray player? And one of the reasons is Barry Levinson's neo-expressionist, neo-surrealist uh, masterpiece toy starring Robin Williams. Because it's not on any streaming. And I, I wanted to... Wa- well, and also, you own it. Yeah. Well, this is the point, right? I got rid of shit like an idiot. Oh, the rats are trying to eat his leg. Oh, Christ. Oh. I, I, uh, yeah, I I don't own it presently, right? So I've had to buy it on DVD for me because of Blu-ray either. But I just can't watch that. And when Netflix curse first came along, it had everything and it all made sense. Now it's been fucking... We got to a point where they're deliberately making things and not releasing them for tax reasons. 
So if I want to watch toys, I've got to buy a disc. And I do want to watch toys. And then there are other movies as well that I just can't watch. And there was a time where, like, Netflix came out and it was like, oh, well, people don't really torrent now in the same way they did because uh, they don't need to. And now people are flocking back to torrents because it's kind of like I've got a service. I've got an app on my phone called Just Watch, which compares all the fucking services. And people are looking on that, seeing you can't stream it, and they have to and they have to go torrent it if they want to watch it because no one has physical media anymore. Like, you know, and it's like not viable for reasons of tax to release the films we want to watch or whatever. Chris Nolan said that recently, didn't he? He said he made the point that you know we knew, but like most people didn't. Most people have been hoodwinked into to buying things. Oh, it's just so much easier. Just buy it on iTunes, or whatever. Mm. And it's like, yeah, but you don't own it. Yeah, your your license that can it, disappear at any they time. They decide that that's gonna yeah mm. because they have a deal with the with the you know a distributor or whatever, or they are the distributor. But if they decide that that's there's a better deal elsewhere and they pull it from the platform, you're yeah, fine. you haven't bought shit. You know, <laughs> you haven't bought. When they say shit. like, because the, because they obviously they'll put it on as like rental or buy, mm. Mm. but then you, what they they don't say is that you're actually you're not actually buying it. You're buying the license to watch it on their platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not it's it's I I know. I mean, I've done it. Don't get me wrong. I've done it for convenience. I paid ninety quid to have all the Bond films mm. on on mm-hmm. iTunes, but but you know. I figured they're probably unlikely to go anywhere and that's fine. But, you know, but I agree. I think, you know, we shouldn't, we ought not to throw out our Blu-ray players just yet because, um, <clears throat> you know, but I I just, I don't know. And it all feels like it's coming to a head in a way because they're, they're not making money at their end. They run on credit. So all these, you know, the big studios anyway and the legacy studios, they're making money on credit. So, you know, th- th- once the credit line runs dry, they're that's what they're chasing and it's like they just need to at some point start um embracing innovation and embracing originality they say they do i mean there's a lot of people who say a lot of things that they don't actually practice yeah it's shysters right (laughs) well but it's just like you know they they that's they they're gonna have to start practicing what they preach because it's just not otherwise it's just not working and and they're also they're just not welcoming new blood mm. people are dropping like flies at the moment because they simply can't make a living at it you know I mean there was a thing recently uh, in the papers or whatever about how the amount of like high level you know people who work like on camera crews and stuff like that who've had to take to like delivering oh like, man I'm in lots of you uh, know I, I know lots of crew I'm in lots of crew related social media groups and yeah, there's loads of people oh. just kind of like, yeah, I'm a fucking makeup artist, but I've been delivering meals because it's all well and good for you lot to go on strike. But we're... I do support the strikes. Just and the thing that clear. annoys me about that, yeah, no, me too. The thing that annoys me about that is that crew are taken seriously because it's seen as a serious thing, as which it is, mm. you know, and I, and I fully support that. But when an actor says it, it's like, well, he's a fucking actor shouldn't have done you're an idiot for trying in the first place you know there's mm. that attitude or like you just show well, off even, even you know, it's seen as cr- a really crew get thing. a kind of well maybe you should get a real job and it's like motherfucker when you're sitting yeah. around wanking off about whatever hbo shit you're watching remember who made it exactly exactly it's like if we, if we didn't do that you wouldn't have anything to watch so yeah. don't give me that shit you know it really annoys me uh but yeah, I mean, I I know, like that. That's why. I mean, act, acting has always been like this. But like, even with crews, it's like it's it's like it's a rich, it's a rich, you know, it's daddy's money game because you have to be able to afford to live without getting paid. Mm. And I'm now, I'm just like when someone comes to me and goes like, "Oh, I've got to pay you," or whatever. It's just like then fuck I'll off. Get off. Yeah, I don't. I'm sorry, my kid has to eat. That's it. If you can't pay me, you don't get to put me in stuff. That's it. Game over. Like, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. I mean, that's, I'm sorry. Job done. Right, you know. Fuck you. Yeah. I like, well, she takes the predator's arm off, and it's, it's kind of slightly comical where it's like lodged into the, it's lodged into the tree still. <laughs> it's, it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because people people complained about this. It's kind of like how can a how can a sixty pound gal beat a predator? And it's like, hey, guess what? Uh, it wasn't really realistic for Mister Universe to beat a predator. That's not the point. The point is, it's. <laughs> Well, it's ingenuity. Precisely. Yeah. It's ingenuity and brains over brawn. Like, that's the whole point. She has a strategy. Like, she's studied it and she knows its weaknesses. Yeah. Like, you know, and the predator is a fucking arsehole anyway, right? Because it just, you imagine, you know, it's it's as fair as hunting buffalo with a rifle. The buffalo isn't really putting up a fight, is it? Um, 
No, exactly. So, well, and also, I like that. I like the you know she kind of gets oh, it, 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 like it cut it. <laughs> yeah, it cut its own arm off. You know, because she went at it with a spear and it got the shield out to get her, but it deflected. Yeah, it, its own yeah. arm. You know, and it kills itself. And yeah, and because yeah, she yeah. hides, she does the smart shit with the mask. She hides the the mask. I think yeah. it's really great. Like, um, so those kind of complaints is kind of like, yeah. Guess what? Firstly, soldiers don't look like Mister Universe, and secondly, the point is a man isn't supposed to be able to be, or a person isn't supposed to be able to beat the predator. Like, it's their ingenuity and it's their thought process that. I, and I think we talked about this before, but yeah. predator is essentially about someone overcoming a bully. Like because it's so mismatched, it's right. so horribly mismatched. Like it's a the predator is a fucking dick. <laughs> like he turns up like completely armed to the teeth and just oh god, looks like a seven foot tall reptile is better at fight. Yeah, an invisible reptile with a laser gun is better at fighting than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 the one thing I'll say that is a bit far-fetched is that she seems to work its stuff out very quickly with only fleeting glances of it. Okay. Because you, you're just seeing it taking other people out and she's sort of like clocking things that are going on, which I get. And it, look, I, it's, it's again, it's a nitpick because you kind of go, yeah, but what do we really want to see several occasions of her working it out? Mm, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. Come on. The point is, is that she's she's just smarter and that's... And almost like, don't forget that it's kind of like that we're almost in the shoes of her brothers and her tribe in that like they keep seeing her figure stuff out which they haven't figured out, you know. And it's kind of like she's supposed to be slightly smarter. But, it just know, it um, just misses her face. It's great. Yeah, he's kind of like, what? Well, <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, huh? oh. It's great. Yeah, because they probably they may well have shot the more procedural yeah. stuff for her and took it out for pacing. Yeah, you know, we don't know. Um, but it works again it's like I, I think as people as audience members need to get off their fucking high horse about like but I didn't see that happen it's like just immerse yourself in it just remember that you're being told a visual story and that actually maybe if she appears slightly magical to you that's the point because she's supposed to to everyone else you know yeah I mean? yeah it's she's, like she's like, shown as being kind of elevated among the other people <laughs> and you know it's it, and it's all tied mm. into the themes and stuff because it's do you know what it is it's fucking cinema sins isn't it it's fucking pit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. he picks up the knife, but in the next shot, he's not holding the knife. And it's like, because we cut away. It's it's, <laughs> it, it, it's what Mark, our friend Mark calls uh, the magical land of off-screen. Anything is possible in the magical land of off-screen. And if we haven't been looking at, at someone for five seconds, that knife could have gone in their back pocket. We don't know. It's probably a continuity error, but it doesn't yeah. grind the film to a halt. Yeah, yeah, baby. I like that the f- there's a slight f- film grain to some of there the is, shots. There is, yeah, which I sort of think is a bit. It's nice. It kind of gives it a sudden sort of dances with wolves look. Well, that's what I mean because it, it has I mean, the so. feel of a kind of historical epic, doesn't it? And I, d- I don't know if that's like a, yeah, that could be. It might because I kind of feel like they're riding a sort of high ISO on this. I don't know, and it could be a post thing. I don't know, but yeah, I noticed that earlier. There's some I, kind of but, nice film grainy. My point still stands though. Is if you worked out how to use the predator's helmet and spear gun. Take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. <laughs> Don't leave it in the forest. <laughs> bring yeah, it back. I, bring the bring that handy shield yeah, as well. I, I, I sort of wonder. Oh, and the bombs. <laughs> yeah, the laser bombs <laughs> the laser that it let bombs. off in the forest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. Just a thought. But just a thought. <laughs> but no. I love this. All the blood. She's blooded. She's blooded herself and stuff. That's great. And it looks like a, it just looks like a historical epic. It's got a kind of um, so that mm. <laughs> you know this is a, a line I expected to draw, but um. Danny Cohen, who shot the King's Speech, um, I've worked with him. Yeah. Oh, what did, oh, on the yeah. uh, Tom Hiddleston thing. I shot an ad with yeah, him. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. No, no. I shot an ad. Ad. No, not, not that. that not that. Um, I did uh, an ad. You know that ad I did where I'm looking. Oh, for the a jury ring, one. Yeah. And, and it, it fucking. Lo- it looks yeah. like he it shot looks that. like he did because he did. Yeah. Um, shot it on 35 mil. There film. you go. Okay. So Dan- Danny Cohen's mm. look um, mm-hmm. is not a million miles away from this. Like Danny Cohen uses lots of kind of diffusion and fabrics and soft sources. And and it's kind of quite strongly motivated and stuff. And I've seen the ad you're in, and it looks fucking wonderful. Danny Cohen's fucking awesome, and and this is what I mean. He's a he's a very he's a very nice guy. He's a very approachable, nice bloke as well. Okay. But he's very sort of reserved, and he's not a very outgoing person. Okay. I'd say that, but he's he knows what he's going for visually. Like he's a very good very, to know in a situation where I want to kiss his ass. 
um, <laughs> which would probably be any time I meet him because I think he's I think he's probably making make, him make very awkward. Yeah, I really I really love yeah. what he does. I love yeah. what he does. And um, yeah. you know, looking at it because yeah. this this because that's a kind of historical drama, and this has the look of that. It's lots of kind of what I, to my eye are soft sources and textiles and bounce and things like that to create that look. It's a hundred. It's a hundred percent what you would do, right? If you're a filmmaker, you go. That's the look I want. I want the environment to be as cinematically real as, but you know, I want to lean into how you would shoot a historical drama. Yeah. Um, as possible, and and one not like a not a revenant style looking at mm. it. You know, not the bleak realism, but you want that kind of Dances with Wolves sort of almost romantic. Yeah, and it's not a million miles away everything. from something like the yeah. Revenant, but yeah, it's not that. You know, yeah, no, no, it's, but it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the way it has that Hollywood sheen to it a little bit more. Yeah, I think, and I just feel like creatively yeah. that someone has, you know, sixty million dollars. That's nothing to us because again, we live in a perverse society. But like, yeah, you crack on and do that. You've got these ideas. You've got a rounded and strong concept and a new take. You know, which mm-hmm. I, and I, I think a lot because it's basically the same story, but it just does lots of interesting things visually and thematically. And I and and, and I am, as the young people say, here for it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mid. It is not it's, uh, mid. It's, I think it's it's upper. 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 I don't oh, know what boy. they fucking say. T- top of the. I range. did. I, I was. Re- <laughs> top of the range. I was recently on a train. Uh, and I was sat in the four seats and it was a busy train and three like Gen Z kids came and s- occupied the other three seats and I was listening to music but I kept kind of picking up their chat and they sounded to me like the gang from The Dark Knight Returns <laughs> or, or the kids from Clockwork Orange um, the, the, the yeah, 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 yeah just Which, dense yeah, futuristic yeah. slang of just like flop the bob double time to grease the nunchucks Drock. <laughs> Drock. Yeah. i was just like oh my god and because of memes i've got a bit of a handle on how young people speak I'm just kind of like oh my god the these these are the kids that are going to put me in the ground one day <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> My thing is, I'm sort of like because I'm a I'm an actual parent. I get to play that kind of like I understand. <laughs> yeah, get it. Or yeah. care I can't wait to yeah, hate so her music one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, I was asked. I was I was asked to sort of potentially be involved tentatively in a project in which we would we need to get Stormzy, and I was just like, don't know. Storm Z. Yeah, I know it's a, an important person, but I was just like, I have no idea. But I know I couldn't hum you a Stormzy theme, June, whatever. So I had to look him up, and I was like, yeah, mm, down with the that, kids. This is a cool music video. I saw a very yeah, cool he's cool. I, I like him a lot, so, and you know, I I kind of yeah. keep my oar into that type of music anyway. So I, I mean, I don't I don't mm. know who Stormzy is because I'm young and down with the kids, is what I'm saying. I'm not somehow. <laughs> you know, don't worry, I'm I'm a I'm a hep cat. <laughs> I'm hip to the groove. I don't yeah. fucking know. But I don't yeah, get me yeah. for that thing. What I really hate and feel is just completely manufactured by social media. Is this kind of supposed war between generations? And it's like millennials say this, mm. Gen X say this, Boomers say this. It's like, yeah, this helps no one. Like, and I don't, and I well, never want to be the fucking. I world. don't want to be old man yells at, at clouds. Do you know what I mean? It's like, Gen Z talk funny and they behave like this. It's like, yeah, probably because they were born fucking 20 years after I was. G- guess what? You fucking annoyed your mum and dad. You- you're turning into everything you yeah. fucking moaned about and you're being completely unself aware about it. It's like just sitting around ragging on kids. I can't like, come on. I think it was, uh, you know, Russell Peters, the comedian. Mm. I think he said a thing recently. He said something in that vein where he was just like, you know what? All that's true. You know what's also true is that we raised them. Uh, yeah. So it's not like we could, you know, he was, he's a bit older, but he's just like, you can't complain about subsequent generations when you're the ones charged with bringing them up. So like, you know what? Yeah. Boomers brought him up or brought yeah. us up or whatever. And it's like, and they fucked it up because they were trying to run away from well, certain things. Yeah, and we're going to The great the example thing. is kind of like, yeah. oh, well, millennials all just expect a participation medal. And it's like, guess who invented the participation medals? It was yeah. fucking you. Exactly. Don't fucking Jesus Christ. Well, it's, yeah, they're all wrapped in cotton wool and they're going on about their trigger warnings and the, this and the microaggressions and it's like because you told them to, 
It's like you don't yeah. get to fucking you whinge about it after fucking like, let them. not that not that you should talk to individuals as though they are a representative well, that, of a generation. Uh, of, that's what that, you know, that's part of what bothers me. Class, it's a classic of kind of like. Oh shit. well, I saw a Gen Z are doing this. It's like yeah, probably. Do you know what they were doing as well? Minding their fucking business. So. <laughs> come and post about it on the internet, you crotchety old cunt. And again, not. And they don't speak for all people in yeah. that generation. And do you know what? Like... You're gonna die, and 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 they're gonna be annoyed yeah. by the kids twenty years younger than them, Generation A or whatever they're gonna fucking be. So it it's as it ever yeah. was. Like also, just to put the back down on the the other people, you know, because the Gen Z, some Gen Z kids go, oh, millennials are dumb. They do this, like. Because you know it's divisive in every direction. I don't like it. I'm gonna. What those kids need to hear is like, okay, no generation has ever gone, ever gone. Do you know what I really, really like? Everything my granddad did, all the music and the way he spoke. Let's not change. That's never happened. That's never happened, and it's not going to happen to you. So, like in twenty years, you're going to be annoyed by people, and that's fine. It's the circle of life. If you're a it's Disney a, fan, I don't know, like you know, both angles of that never seem to get. I mean, it's the same with, and we, you know, what we're broadly talking about is just how divisive we are as a society. But it's that thing of like, no one at any point goes, "Hang on, you're at one pole, I'm at the other. What if, right?" Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. instead of saying this extreme view is the right way and this extreme view is the right way we met in the middle you know it's like people going like youth is wasted on the young and all that and yeah and then you know generation the younger generations are always hot headed and want to change everything and older people tend to be a bit more conservative and go well, actually this works and that because I know because I have experience but I can learn mm. from you new ways of doing stuff wider innovation meets um, efficiency let's find a way to, to put those two together. No, no, not going to do that. No, just going to yell at each other. You know, like, it, it's just it's tedious. It really is well, tedious. It's, I it's, we've gone on It's device. Else, well, this is what normally happens at the end credits of a movie for us, though. We talk about bullshit. Stormzy. Stormzy. <laughs> I, I, you know yeah. um, Simon Farnaby, the actor? Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels. Hmm? Stormzy, <laughs> Stormzy Daniels. Simon, Simon Farnaby, the actor, British actor, comedian. Is, oh, do you remember? Uh, do you remember in uh, Alan Partridge this time, uh, Jenny, the presenter, her boyfriend with the curly hair. That's Simon Farnaby, the weather guy, the guy who presents the Did history show and stuff. Oh, well, and by the... Alan's jealous of him and everything. He's in Mid Morning Matters, isn't he? Is he? I, I think, think I don't think you are. Doesn't matter. Beard, no. Doesn't matter. Forget it. Simon sorry. Farnaby, the actor, is talking about on Charlie Broker. He's talking about how he likes Last of the Summer Wine, and he said people will say to you that Last of the Summer Wine is what your granddad watches. And I say, good, you should listen to your granddad. Your granddad's interesting. He's lived till he was 80. He's probably got a lot to tell you. Listen to your granddad. And also, listen to fucking kids. Don't have a shit fit and a piss yeah. and a moan. If they say something, hey, perhaps try and fucking understand them instead of scurrying off and doing a meme. And if someone middle-aged talks to you, <laughs> listen to them. They're valid as well. All right? No one's stuck around for this. I don't know what I am. I am now middle-aged and I don't know where. This is clearly my midlife crisis is struggling to adapt to people struggling to adapt. And I don't know quite what I'm supposed to do with that. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think we're, I, I, yeah, I think we're, I'm too preoccupied with, with raising a child and trying to keep a household um, and and right. you know grow a business and fucking you know which I guess is what middle aged people should be preoccupied with but yeah. um, I do feel like our generation has been kind of stilted in terms of like career progression and all that I do think we've spent the last sort of 10 to 15 yeah, well, years we, stuck we, we, we in became, stasis we, we are the first generation to be worse off than their parents for a while um, and mm. you know there was a war and a recession and another recession and a plague so, <laughs> so you know Followed by more war. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> we've come to the end of Prey. Oh dear. Thank you very much for sticking around, everyone. Um, we appreciate that it's been a been a minute since we've we've done. It's been anything. a minute on Pluto. Uh, since it's we been a. <laughs> yes, that's right. So um, 
you know, apologies for that. It's just been it has been a very tricky few months, really, um, both you know professionally and personally uh, across the board. So we're very sorry about that. But that's just unfortunately, you know, as a, the aforementioned, you know, middle <laughs> middle aged stuff we've been up to. Yeah. It's just been kind of getting in the way. But you know, we do enjoy this. We do want to keep bringing it back for you guys, and we do want to sort of provide. Um, stuff i think our perspectives are shifting which is quite interesting talking you know as as things have gone on there were, weren't many fart jokes in that no, so maybe we are yeah. growing up and, and just to just say I just, I just think but, it was um, a, it was a you know we're waiting for the dam to burst of discussing this stuff we mostly complained about the industry and uh i i, I just think that we just need a venue for <laughs> fart and poo jokes and that will come because i still laugh at poos and funnies and bums and willies so I, I, you know, I will never change yes i'll never well like you I deal a lot with poos. And <laughs> You're and desensitized. Personal life, desensitized. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, thank you very much, everyone, for sticking around. Um, this will, of course, go up on Patreon first. So if you have any inclination towards doing that, I also appreciate, again, you guys on Patreon have had a dearth of stuff. But um, do think about heading over there um link will be below in the description and um we'll see you again soon hopefully i think we're going to try and i i guess try and get something out um again soon, yes maybe Which yes is? and also yeah. i need um, to edit the live risky quizness show so we have a live oh, yes. risky quizness show in the bag and i've just been a bit distracted with production mm-hmm. personal issues uh but i will make that a reality very good make it manifest yeah. and till then um, whatever form that takes we, we, we do come back uh, we'll see you soon thank you very much and bye